Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. Topping our newscast, the Office of Highway Safety within the VI Police Department is changing its tactics a bit. Instead of just pulling over motorists for violations, now they're also imparting more information on how to avoid that in the future. Some federal officials from the Department of Transportation were also on site to lend support. News 2's April Knight has information. The eastern end of Veterans Drive saw a little more activity Tuesday morning. Police officers on the side of the road pulling vehicles over, and they say it's all about making the road safer for VI motorists. When we do our enforcement activities, it's not for us to be punitive. Our overall goal is to promote safety. Highway safety officials say one of their biggest failures is pulling people over without giving them much of an education on road safety. Now they're hoping to change that. We give them an uh, inspection pamphlet that lets them know exactly what we look for. We encourage them to do pre-trip inspections, meaning before you leave your site, there are certain things that you're supposed to check your vehicle for. Some of the vehicles were eventually free to go, but those with severe infractions are barred from public roadways, like this car that had to get towed away. To put a vehicle out of service, there are some critical items, brakes, the steering, suspension, uh, the wheels, the tires. But a lot of the officer's focus is on large vehicles like these. Nationally, the economic impact of, of crashes involving a large truck and a bus in the United States is, is over $112 billion a year. In the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico alone, the economic impact of crashes caused by trucks or large vehicles is up to $250 million. And according to federal highway officials, the common reason is driver error. Driver behavior, uh, driver inattention, uh, driver fitness, um, those are issues that are the, are the top contributing causes. Federal highway officers say their goal is to lessen that impact so the money can be invested back into motor carrier safety. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. In other news, Marvin Pickering, the director of the Virgin Islands Bureau of Internal Revenue, says excise taxpayers can now enter their excise tax returns online and immediately pay the taxes through MasterCard or Visa. Taxpayers clearing personal items, which are exempt from excise tax, can also clear those shipments. The public is reminded that all shipments, including those through the U.S. Postal Service and other commercial delivery services, are subject to clearance through the excise tax office. Excise taxpayers were invited to training sessions, which were held on all three islands. Taxpayers with questions should contact Glenford Hodge, who is the supervisor of the excise tax division, and that number is 340-715-1050, extension 3201. Senator Marvin Blyden, who is the chair of the Committee on Housing, Public Works and Waste Management, held a town hall meeting Monday evening at CHS Auditorium, where he told Lovingland, Bellevue and Calabash Boom residents that the proposed $200 rent increase would not occur on July 1st. Senator Blyden explained that a compromise was made after conversations with the senior vice president and the regional director of McCormack Barron Management. Senator Blyden was able to reach a compromise with the management company to which allowed them to increase rents not more than $50 due to the increase in family median income in the territory according to the latest HUD data publishing. Senator Blyden then allowed the tenants to take advantage of the time with the management company to voice their concerns at their respective developments. Some residents noted maintenance issues that plagued their units for years in some cases. Well, things look a lot brighter uh, along Garden Street on St. Thomas. That's after an interagency collaboration that targeted trash, debris, and abandoned vehicles in the area. On Thursday and Friday last week, agencies and community volunteers, they got together to remove elements that are not only an eyesore, but could also harm residents in the area. News 2's April Knight has more. Late last week, Garden Street on St. Thomas got a bit of a facelift. A joint task force made up of various government agencies made it their mission to do a major cleanup. This is an initiative of a all-around cleanup for the Garden Street Long Path area. This operation is uh, in conjunction with all the outstanding agencies that we have working 
within our government, waste management, along with public work, the police department, uh, property and procurement. The effort was a result of meetings held with the Long Park and Garden Street Association. We were welcomed in by the association. We had several meetings concerning this area as to the removal of trash, uh, the roadside cleaning, uh, the parking of uh, Lang Park, Garden Street areas. Government crew worked on unsightly signage as well as roadside trash. They also focused on removing abandoned vehicles, removing debris, conducting fire safety inspections and checking for mosquito breeding sites. WAPA crew also brought in their trucks and worked on some utility poles that needed attention. As you could see, interchanging some poles that we had here leaning for quite a while. It took the combined efforts of government agencies and community volunteers and residents in the area are certainly grateful. We thank the administrator's office along with the other government agencies that help us today and tomorrow. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Kudos to all the participating, participating agencies, the VIPD, Fire Services, Waste Management, Health, Licensing and Consumer Affairs, DPNR, and Public Works. In other news, the administrative offices of the Department of Human Services Head Start program on St. Croix was burglarized, according to education officials, and as a result, several computers and other associated hardware were stolen. The VIPD was notified and has begun its investigation with the help of federal partners. Commissioner uh, Vivian Everson Flood said she is disheartened that individuals would illegally enter the building and steal computers that facilitate the learning processes of the youngest in our community. These computers, she said, and related hardware and the information generated and stored in them are the properties of the local and federal government. The department greatly appreciates the community's assistance in bringing the perpetrators of the crime to justice. Call the VIPD if you can help. On Monday, May 23rd, about 10.26 a.m., police say Mr. Jamal L. Mike turned himself into the Criminal Investigation Bureau and was then taken into custody, placed under arrest and charged with attempted second degree murder, assault first degree, assault third degree, unauthorized possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime and unauthorized possession of a firearm as per an arrest warrant. Here's more. On Saturday, May 7th, 2016, Kadeem Barnes was in the era of Ezard Grocery when he was shot multiple times about the body. Mr. Barnes was transported to Royal Lester Snyder Hospital and underwent surgery. Mr. Mike Bell was set at $100,000 by order of court. Unable to post bail, Mr. Mike was processed and turned over to the Bureau of Corrections pending his advice of rights hearing on Tuesday, May 24th. This case is presently under investigations by the Criminal Investigations Bureau. Any persons having information regarding this incident are asked to contact the Criminal Investigations Bureau at 340-774-2211, extension 5556, 340-714-9807. They can also call 911. Or In other news, Indian national Chintam Kumar Patel made his initial appearance on Friday before U.S. Magistrate Judge Ruth Miller after being charged in a complaint with using a false document to defraud the United States. Patel was released pending further proceedings. According to the complaint on May 19, 2016, Patel appeared at the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Primary Inspection Checkpoint at the Sirili King Airport and presented a false New York driver's license. Patel was a ticketed passenger on an American Airlines flight to the mainland U.S. under federal law. If convicted of using a false document to defraud the United States, Patel faces a maximum of one year in prison and $100,000 fine. The Senate Committee on Culture, Historic Preservation, Youth and Recreation got an update on Monday on the Virgin Islands delegation to Cuba for the 2016 Festival de Carib, while lawmakers agreed that the benefits of cultural exchange and the exposure are great for the territory. They are concerned about the cost of sending the delegation. Don Henry, Commissioner of DPNR, stated that VICA will be responsible for all travel-related costs for the trip, which can reach the sum of $100,000. Senator Kenneth Gittins pointed out that the shortage of cash flow in the government, and yet he said there is money for delegations to Cuba and China, as well as the centennial celebrations. Senator Tregenza Road said he is uncomfortable with having a member of the legislature be a part of delegating the funds.
turn our attention overseas more than a decade after he was first accused of sexual misconduct. Bill Cosby will go to trial. A Pennsylvania judge found enough evidence during a hearing Tuesday to proceed with the criminal trial. Cosby faces three counts of felony and decent assault from a 2004 case involving Andrea Constant, an employee at Temple University. She was the first of more than 50 women who have accused Cosby of sexual misconduct. Constant said Cosby invited her to his home in 2004 and told her to wear comfortable clothes. She said Cosby gave her a few pills to take the edge off. Afterward, Cosby sexually assaulted her. If convicted, Cosby faces up to 30 years in prison. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. Taking a look at the numbers there, we can see everything up. The Dow 213, NASDAQ 95, S&P 500 up at 28. Coming up on News 2, as promised, the wait is over and now we know who the best of VI 2016 winners are. They were revealed in Friday's edition of the Virgin Islands Daily News. Ever wonder how that voting process takes place? We'll have more. Welcome back. Senator Kenneth Gittins wants an emergency fact-finding hearing set at the Senate to discuss residents' concerns over the WAPA board's recent vote to raise the base rate electricity charge. According to Gittins, he received a number of calls from concerned residents. The emergency Senate hearing, if approved, will also address the progress of the propane conversion project in each district. Senator Gittin said what is most troubling to him is that the rate increase, if approved by the Public Service Commission, comes at a time when rate payers have seen the first decrease in years. Be sure to comment too uh, as we keep you updated. Well, hundreds of nominees in hundreds of categories competed for votes, and now the Virgin Islands Daily News reveals the winners in the Best of VI Annual Readers Poll. By voting for the Virgin Islands businesses, places, and people who deserve to be recognized as the best, such as real estate agencies, mechanics, restaurants, and even media, while some nominated businesses are encouraged to participate by claiming their listing and selecting the categories. Here's more. Hundreds of nominees in hundreds of categories competed for votes. The Best of the VI 2016 um, St. Thomas edition is just spectacular. We had more participation than ever, and um, we had a record-setting 268 pages. It's, it's, a big, it's a big book this year. The Virgin Islands Daily News has revealed the winners in the Best of the VI Annual Readers Poll 16th edition. It's the Pulitzer Prize winning paper's largest annual promotional publication. Well, this year we've added um, our content pages. We've added our content pages, which is more user friendly. It's divided up by categories, so it's more segmented where it's easier to locate you know, each customer in the magazine. The Virgin Islands businesses, places, and people who deserve to be recognized as the best, such as real estate, agencies, mechanics, and more, are recognized. You can just skim through and say, oh, I want to go to that, that restaurant. They want best steaks. I want to go there. So those are the type of features that we've added. Um, we've added some new uh, categories, many new categories throughout the year. and. Um, we also had Best Selfie. While some are nominated, businesses are encouraged to participate by claiming their listing and selecting the categories in which they really shine. You can go online at uh, www.bestofvi.com and you can just register your business. You get two categories, um, your choice, whatever you'd like to put in. And um, once you've registered, then the official ballot comes out. You can vote on bestofvi.com, you can vote Facebook, Twitter, texting, uh, Instagram, and, um, and the ballot itself. Official votes are tallied. We have an outside agency that actually does that for us. Once we get back the results, then the real work starts. When you walk into their office and they see that certificate and you tell them they've won, it's like, wow, their smiles. That's what gets me. 
Now, in celebration, anniversary pages are included in this copy. And if you did not get your copy, you can pick one up at the VI Daily News or some of the winning vendors. You can log on to dailynewsvi.com or bestofvi.com. Now, we are proud to announce that we were once again voted as winners. TV2 News, News 2 for Best Local News, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix. TV2 Productions for Best Production, Television, Video Production Services, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix. Plus, I am honored to receive the Best TV Personality of the VI. Now, our parent company, Innovative, has also won numerous awards, including Best Telephone Service, Long Distance Service, Cable TV Service, High Speed Internet, Commercial Internet, and Voice and Best Smartphones. Big thank you to all of our supporters. Time for our graduations there. It was only 17, but school reps are calling it the largest senior class. The graduation ceremony of the Virgin Islands Montessori School and Peter Gruber International Academy class of 2016 was held on Sunday. Friends and family members packed the school's campus and looked on in full support as their loved ones received their diplomas. All 17 plan to attend college and the total amount of scholarships awarded 4,140,000 over four years. Valedictorian Marcus Nakaitis finished his high school career with a 4.38 GPA, attending Princeton University to study chemical engineering. Salutatorian Naren Advani finishes his high school career with a 3.97 GPA. Congratulations to the graduates. Now let's take a look at the Department of Education's graduation schedule of upcoming commencement ceremonies. Here's a look at junior high schools. Elena Christian will be held on June 14th, 9 a.m. at the school. John H. Woodson on June 15th, 9 a.m. at the school. Arthur Richards, June 16th, 1 p.m. at the school. Adelita Cancra on June 20th, 9.30 a.m. at the auditorium. BCB, June 20th, 10 a.m. at the auditorium and the Julius E. Sprouse School on St. John, June 21st, 5.30 p.m. in the cafeteria. St. Joseph Catholic High School hosted their first annual information, communication, and technology competition. Local area schools were invited to ob observe that competition, while Internet Technology Service Providers, Innovative, and VINGN gave presentations. As for the competition, working under time constraints, students had to bring back a downed network. The ninth grade students presented safety tips on how to properly handle power tools. St. Joseph is the first and only IT academy in the territory. Here's more. We're teaching them the basics of understanding how IT works, networks, um, interfacing technologies, um, and this is going to be the platform for any industry going forward. First passion was becoming a pilot, but now since I get so familiar with IT and so accustomed to it, I think I'm going to stay in it. The, the skills and the practice that they're getting here in this program are outstanding. They can apply directly to a career or a job or work on almost any network around the world. I have a better insight in what construction is now because I can relate what I learn in class to what we do at home. This was something great. I would like to see more of the schools doing this. It was nice. It was a great experience. A great program there. The Virgin Islands Technology Related Assistance for Individuals with Disabilities Program, Vitrate, they hosted their first Assistive Technology Expo today at the Windward Passage Hotel in St. Thomas. This event brought together local, regional and national vendors to meet with the disability community to showcase some of the most advanced and practical assistive technology devices and services available. Vitrade is a community program committed to providing Virgin Islands residents with free access to information on assistive technology and UVI was the host of that. A small dynamic group of educators from the VI American Samoa, Guam and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands plus DC joined together in a pair exchange network or PEN at UVI St. Croix to brainstorm and share ideas on and information on integrating cultural aspects to achieve academic success. It was the first day of the federally funded Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Project. The conference, dubbed VI Pen, was held in the Virgin Islands for the very first time. Participants from the Virgin Islands promoted the uniqueness of their islands during their lively interactive PowerPoint presentations. The U.S. Virgin Islands Congress of Parents, Teachers and Students Association 
The USVI PTSA, they're advising the public of its upcoming annual meeting and leadership training that will be conducted from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, June 4th at the Lockhart Elementary School in St. Thomas. Election and installation of new officers as well as amendments to articles of incorporation and the bylaws will be conducted at the meeting. Laura Bay, who is the president of the National PTA, will be the keynote speaker. Now, you have to register. The number to call is 340-643-7492 or 340-277-9392 to register. Well, there were many mugs in the air. French Town Brewing Company, one of the VI's newest production brewery, joined St. John Brewers at Mongoose Jun Junction, St. John Brew Pub, and the two VI Brewers together joined brewers across the U.S. in celebrating American Craft Bear Week, which was celebrated from May 16th to the 22nd. And as you can see, French Town Brewing is one of those winners of the Daily News Best Of. Now in its 11th year, the event is a nationwide celebration of small and independent craft brewers sponsored by the Brewers Association. The highlight, of course, was the simultaneous toast across the nation on Thursday at 8 p.m. All raised a glass of their favorite indie craft beer on St. John and in front of the rum shandy on St. Thomas in recognition. St. Croix Track Club Mustangs won 11 medals at the AAJI for 14 to 19-year-olds in Bayamón, Puerto Rico on Sunday. Now, they took nine athletes who qualified for the championships. The top eight ranked athletes over the season met to crown the best three athletes in each category. In addition to the, in addition, the 200 meters had, an, had a finals and A and B finals due to rain and timing mishaps of their first qualifier. The athletes were Anelia Austri, Crystal Gordon, Zhejiang Washington, Michaela Smith, Layla Brown, Markayla Moncheri, Rodney Griffin, Lamar Miller, and Gregory Gibson. Medal winners were Anelia Austri, Rodney Griffin, Michaela Smith, Lamar Miller, Crystal Gordon, Layla Brown, Markayla Moncheri, and Gregory Gibson. Congratulations to the athletes representing the VI in a great way. Stick around, your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. Another beautiful day to enjoy all across the Virgin Islands. Looking at our current satellite, you'll notice all of this cloud cover off to our west. That's associated with a storm system that's impacting parts of Cuba and Hispaniola. But the good news for our area is all of that mess will stay off to the west, so we will enjoy a quiet forecast, periods of clouds and sun over the next several days. And again, we can't rule out those uh, spotty trade wind showers. No big deal here. So a nice night tonight. Partly cloudy, a scattered shower or two, not a total washout by any means. Your overnight low falling to 80 degrees. Tomorrow in St. John will reach a high of 89 degrees, a mix of clouds and sunshine with a shower in places. Typical trade wind weather pattern for St. Thomas tomorrow. Periods of sunshine, a spotty shower in the forecast with your highs in the upper 80s. And that's also what we can expect tomorrow in St. Croix. We'll climb to the upper 80s. 87 is your daytime high. Peaks of sunshine with a shower in spots. If you're heading out to the water, here's a look at your marine forecast for the Atlantic side. Winds out of the east between 10 and 15 knots with waves coming in between 3 and 5 feet. Similar conditions for the Caribbean side. Waves between 3 and 5 feet. Winds easterly between 10 and 15 knots. Here's a look at your extended forecast across the Virgin Islands very similar weather pattern Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Typical trade winds rolling on through, so we can't rule out a spotty shower or two, but it should be fairly nice out there with daytime highs in the upper 80s as we wrap up the work week. Now, the weekend will be quite unsettled. All of this tropical moisture going to converge across the area. That will lead to an increase in clouds, showers, and even some thunderstorms possible. So enjoy the beautiful weather over the next couple of days because we do have some unsettled conditions to deal with for the weekend. Sandy will send it back to you. Thank you for that. It is time for our new Sioux weather picture there by Jada Isaac. 
fifth grader representing the Wesley Methodist 21st Century After School and uh, looking at some sunny conditions and clouds. And uh, for now, we can expect that, but you want to keep the umbrella handy, Jada, because shower here and there and fairly nice for now. But until the weekend, we may get some more showers. Thank you for that. Send us your news weather picture to CBS News 2, Innovative Business Center, 4611 Tutu Park Suite 300. St. Thomas VI 00802. That is all for this edition of News 2. We'd like to thank you for joining us for all the latest in news, weather and sports. I'm Sandra Gumansing. We'll see you next time.